we would be remiss if we didn't start this week's episode of News Dump with the absurd moment that was broadcast <laughs> where Marjorie Titan Green decided to commit what amounts to a felony during a <laughs> House Oversight and Accountability Committee hearing when she displayed multiple images of Hunter Biden having sex with a prostitute. That's his dick! Images we obviously can't even show here and almost certainly shouldn't have been shown during a government meeting. A meeting which, by the way, had nothing to do with the president's son's stolen laptop, which conservatives are still using in order to constantly drum up a scandal. Even though it didn't work last time at all. They're still trying to... We are a full election cycle past that. The Hunter laptop thing came out during the Trump administration. Yeah. When, by the way, his administration was in charge, and uh, you would assume if there was anything really there, uh, the full force of that investigation would have happened during the yeah, Trump presidency. It just doesn't seem like much of a winning strategy. Well, I've, in fact, large Marge showing off these images, it might have actually had the opposite effect of what she was going for because it actually took any public focus away from the reason that the meeting was being held in the first place, which was Hunter Biden pleading guilty to tax dodging and whether or not he was given a lenient plea deal because of his family's connections. Which, yeah, I mean, that's bad. Not going to deny that. No. It's good to see some accountability when it comes to tax dodging. But the sad fact is that, unfortunately, in this country, if you're of any status or wealth and are found guilty of a white-collar crime, the penalties for that crime are almost universally going to be a light slap on the wrist. And Hunter did, in fact, plead guilty to these charges last month. Yeah, so. he took a plea deal, so... Yeah. I, I, I don't understand what more they what, want. Yeah, what, what can even she be was, done? You, like... You, she was trying to tie it to, I don't know how this uh, affects the plea deal or whatever, but trying to tie the prostitutes to his tax dodging by saying that he was paying for the prostitutes with company money and then writing it off as a business expense. Okay, I mean, that's why, I, listen, I don't follow this Hunter Biden shit at all. I, I'm, if you can prove that a crime... Oh, and by the way, they couldn't... The IRS whistleblower was there and was like, yeah. no, we don't have actual evidence Again, of that Again, yeah, if a crime had taken place, uh, Congress can't do shit about that. That is for the justice system to <laughs> yeah. deal with. Anyway, yeah. Uh, but yeah, since the Republican members of the House of Representatives can't seem to make any of their accusations stick to the actual president, they've spent countless hours in taxpayer dollars, dollars paid by... You and I. All of us, by, not Hunter Biden. By viewers like you yeah. uh, to launch repeated investigations into Hunter Biden and his hog that haven't amounted to anything. And in some cases, completely blew up in their faces. Mm -hmm. Also, isn't it ironic, coming from the party who recoils at so so much, as, as, as much as a nipple, just a, a nipple being shown on film. That is America going down the toilet. These now, people, here, take, uh, out, take a look at these photos of a yeah. prostitute holding up Hunter Biden's hog. These people all have fainting couches at home, and here they are uh, gathering around to look at Hunter Biden's hog. Also, like, I've avoided seeing Hunter Biden's uh, supposedly uh, generous member <laughs> for, like, three years now. And I've done that very easily by simply uh, not constantly. Like, th th these people are just sitting around all day. Looking at the, president, over at the president's son's monster dong, allegedly. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's just a little weird. They got that one weird going me. down the water slide. <laughs> oh, yeah, I heard about that one. Yeah. That's funny. Well, in addition to that, it's hypothetically illegal to display these images without the consent of those involved. Especially considering that the images... Uh, very famously stolen. Yeah, they're kind of textbook revenge porn. Yeah, especially in a public setting on a broadcast network. It, this was this aired, I believe, on, on C-SPAN. <laughs> yeah. Well, which you would assume, you know, with all of the uh, angry moms writing in about Super Bowl performances, that there's going to be some seriously angry letters being written about the what was broadcast on C-SPAN. They don't even have to write letters because C-SPAN has a lengthy call-in section <laughs> every day. So I'm sure they've probably already heard from their Yeah, viewers. I forgot about that. I, I, I For a while, I was watching that pretty religiously just yeah. to see if anything fun would pop up. And every it, once in a while, there would be. It C-SPAN is actually pretty cool, uh, much like public radio, but like C-SPAN especially, because like they do actually have like conservative viewers, but they're not insane. They have very, you know, they call in, they share their thoughts, and it's like, okay. Great, yeah. Uh, your party has completely left you, but thank you for your input. 
Because everyone else, they're not watching fucking C-SPAN. They're going on Facebook and reading about adrenochrome and uh, eating babies and, and shit. And po posting the, the, the Jason Aldean video that no one wants you to see. He's not even from a small town. And we'll get He's to from that. Macon. We'll get, we'll get to that. Uh, yeah, you could make the argument. It would be a very good argument that uh, this constitutes revenge porn. It seems like it is. Yeah. Uh, you're showing the naked, sexually explicit images of two people who are not consenting to that being released in a very public There's way. There's laws. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, even at face value, it is strange and telling that a member of the GOP seems to be obsessed with possessing, displaying, and using explicit images of the family member of an opponent for their own political gain. Especially when the entire story around this is years old now. Again, it goes back to the Trump administration, and they keep just trying to tie whatever scandal they can back into this laptop. No, you don't understand. If, uh, the, if these pictures had been on Twitter, a website everyone in America uses, mm -hmm. and hadn't been blocked by the main lamestream libs, yep. uh, Trump would have won in a landslide. Oh, so yeah. that, we'll see this time, libs. Now that you've all seen the hog on C-SPAN, <laughs> we'll see how things go this time. So yeah, the president's son, he is a bit of a fuck up. A bit? He's a fuck up. He's uh, a he, fucking he, mess. He is a mess. Uh, he's pleaded guilty to crimes. He should and looks like he will be punished for those crimes. He should be locked up for his own sake, probably. Yeah, I think that would probably be the best for him. Uh, yeah, but in one instance this week, Joe Biden was actually able to use Marjorie Taylor Greene's own words against her when she started list listing off what she considers a socialist agenda by Biden. And during a speech at the recent Turning Point USA event, gave past examples of, you know, these types of extreme socialist programs. So maybe pulling out the, the, the president's son's wild hog uh, was retribution for him using it's her words. It's not fair that... Average American man is only packing what five, five and a half inches, and the president's son gets eight, nine, ten. Who can say? It's so girthy and long. We need to regulate the president's son's penis, <laughs> and he needs to share that crack cocaine with the rest of us. We can't even find crack cocaine back in Georgia now. Everything's got fentanyl in it. It's not fair, it's bitch. Not fair. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, back to the using her own words against her. Here's here's what happened earlier in the week. So yeah, those programs, things like the New Deal and Medicare enacted by Franklin Delano Roosevelt, a president so popular, he was elected four times. <laughs> and Lyndon Baines Johnson, respectively, those two, two of our greatest modern presidents, I would say, uh, were and still are historically viewed as widely positive uh, programs across the political spectrum, aside from the most unhinged weirdos. Mm -hmm. In fact, Donald Trump is literally using Ron DeSantis' attacks on Medicare as a talking point for his campaign as we speak. They are popular programs. You, old people fucking vote, and they like their Medicare, and they like their Medicaid. Or yeah. they like their Medicare, and they like their Social Security. That's Sorry. Right. Mm -hmm. They like the free shit. Free shit for them, but you, you're making too much money. Making too much money. Ugh. These millennials have gotten lazy. So yeah, <laughs> despite Marjorie Titan Green listing off a bunch of social programs as if they are horrific injustices, the Biden administration took it as a positive and approved this message and threw some positive music under it and turned it into a campaign video. So here you go. Joe Biden had the largest public investment in social infrastructure and environmental programs that is actually finishing what FDR started that LBJ expanded on, and Joe Biden is attempting to complete programs to address education, medical care, urban problems, rural poverty, transportation, Medicare, Medicaid, labor unions, and he still is working on it. But enough with the politics, or as Pitbull calls them, politics. Damn, yeah. Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> He didn't go Mr. Worldwide by keeping a closed mind. That's right. He, he, dolly, dolly, dolly. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about average people being dumb as hell. Can you believe it's only been two years since that woman caused a massive pileup of professional cyclists during the Tour de France? Oh, yeah. Be just because of her desire to appear on television and in photographs. That was good. I like that. Uh, it was apparently one of the worst pileups in the history of the race sparked a Europe-wide manhunt for the person responsible and ended up with the woman turning herself in and being forced to pay a fine. I mean, sure, she sparked a big wreck that ruined a lifetime of training for those involved. 
including one guy who broke both of his arms. But when it was all said and done, the race's director, he went a little easy on her and instead utilized this viral calamity as a teachable moment for future idiots. Mm. Saying at the time, she did something daft. She's no terrorist. We just want people to take care when they come to the tour. And remember, they are here to see the champions and not to get on television. And don't even think about trying this at a NASCAR race. <laughs> if only. Anyway, folks, we regret to inform you that a second attention-seeking individual has hit the Tour de France. <laughs> or, uh, to be more accurate, the cyclists hit them. Yeah. Yes, folks, as you could have already assumed, no one ever learns from anyone else's mistakes. And also, the Tour de France has become an absolute circus in general based on the photos and videos that we've seen over the past few years. It's literally just a bunch of people on the sidelines of the race being as visually obnoxious as possible in an attempt to get a split second of FaceTime on a television broadcast. But it is an international television broadcast, so you gotta, you gotta factor that in. Those are, those are not rookie numbers. Those are big numbers. Although the, the person who caused the massive pileup of a pack of presumably pissed off peddlers... Wow, you nailed that first try. Was, I wrote that to trip you up and you, and you nailed it. ...was doing something way more obnoxious than simply dressing up in a costume and dancing around on the sidelines. They were, of course, trying to take a selfie with the group of riders zipping past them. And in order to get a good selfie that's visually appealing, you're going to have to get close. Yeah, because cameras, they make everything look so far uh, no. away. No, oh, everyone's going to say, oh, you went to the Tour de France, but it looks like you weren't really up close with the cyclists. Can you guess what happened next? Yes, this person, obviously, they got a little too close and they ruined the goddamn race. That's right. Again? Here's the BBC. A spectator taking a selfie caused a crash of about 20 riders on stage 15 of the Tour de France. Sepp Kuss, Vindegaard's Team Jumbo Visma teammate, what uh, those are all words, that? I guess, <laughs> Dutch. Had, <laughs> had his handlebars knocked by a fan holding out a phone. Cuss went down with teammate Nathan Van... <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Stop, these are real people, Elliot. They, de they demand respect. I think they're kind of asking for it. Nathan Van Hooydonk... <laughs> Sorry. Mr. Hooydonk. <laughs> Sorry, Nathan Van Hooydonk. The Dutch. Uh, and brought down a large group in the Peloton. Shortly after the incident, the official tour Twitter account posted a slow motion video of a rider ducking under a spectator's outstretched arm with the message, please pay attention to the riders. <laughs> no, I don't think I will. <laughs> Other statements from teams whose riders were involved included, please be aware when watching cycling at the side of the road. No. Nope. You don't need a cell phone to create mind-blowing memories. Actually, I do. And if you are spectating at this amazing event, please give the riders room to race. They need to give me room. They need to give me room to take pics. But it looks like now at least one of the teams will be doing more than just making a statement asking people not to be stupid. They might press charges against the fan. These are angry Dutch. Hoidonk trained for a long time for this. I think the word fan is probably doing some heavy lifting here. They should say, name one cyclist. Yeah. Oh, you like the Tour de France? Yeah. Name, name all the cyclists. Name, oh, oh, name a cyclist that hasn't ha been stripped of their medals for using steroids for 15 <laughs> oh, years. Oh, easy. You can't. Uh, Bjorg Vlandergluben. Uh, actually, I don't know either. Mm. We'll have to check on that. Sounds like it could be true. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, here's Reuters with that news. Defending champion Jonas Vin <laughs> Vingegaard's Jumbo Visma team are, are considering... <laughs> <laughs> Vindergaard's Jumbo <laughs> Bo Bozo Bilderberg uh, and his uh, clown car of uh, they're considering pressing charges against the spectator who caused a massive crash in Sunday's 15th stage of the Tour de France the Dutch outfit said on Monday Jumbo Visma's Sepp Kuss was brought down by a fan who stretched his arm towards him and the American lost his balance, triggering a pileup that sent two dozens of riders to the deck, including two teammates of Kuss. A source with direct knowledge of the matter told Reuters that the fan had been identified by the French Germanderie, but would not be arrested unless Kuss would sue him. Asked if Kuss would press charges, a Jumbo Visma spokesperson told Reuters, Honk, honk. The <laughs> 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 this, uh, yeah, I'm so sorry to the Tour de France. You need to press charges on Elliot, too. This this Jomberflusen is going to come after you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe yeah. they deserved it for being so goofy. Uh, no. i got to get a picture of these guys if they ride by with these clown horns on their bicycle. i got to get a picture with them. Uh, Jumbo Visma spokesperson told Reuters, the team might do. We'll find out how and when. Honk, honk. <laughs> That's what they sounded like. 
uh, it's a brutal race, you know, lots of training. Yeah, well. And these days, uh, presumably, not everyone's on drugs. Uh, yeah, you would hope. How bad does it suck to be involved in sports now where, like, all of the world records were set during a time when uh, drugs were just running rampant? Yeah, I mean, at least in baseball, everyone is completely on the same page or, like, yeah, every all right. The real goal yeah, is that, like <laughs> every record from like this period of time is technically on the books, I guess, but it's not real. So I, the funny thing about the baseball thing is like Mark McGuire has, you know, been reaccepted into like the MLB's good graces. Apologized, mm. did uh, did the whole did the whole thing. Uh, Sammy Sosa, I believe, is still like, no, fuck you, I did it. Well, he's like a mime now. He like bleached his skin. He looks like a ghost. Yeah, I don't know. That's what hitting the hundred baseballs will do to you. And then uh, what's the other guy? The Daryl Strawberry? No, not him. Whatever, I forget. Uh, the guy who Pete famous. Rose, the guy who gambled on himself. He didn't gamble on himself. Oh, okay. that is a myth. He gambled <laughs> on other. Actually, I might be wrong here, but that's my understanding. Hmm. They did him dirty. Anyway, yeah. just had a gambling problem. The '80s and '90s were uh, Jose two... Canseco. That's oh, who yeah, I'm thinking yeah. of. The Bash Brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, two, uh, two decades of sports excellence. Yeah. I that, mean, uh, that all hey, have asterisks on them. Were you not entertained? I was <laughs> thoroughly entertained. They were hitting dingers left and right. I am not thoroughly entertained when I watch all of the documentaries about the uh, untold damage done to the people who injected those steroids, like the recent American Gladiators 30 for 30, which is sad. Yeah. But uh, but back to cycling. Oh, way, yeah, cycling. A way less cool sport. A harmless sport. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we can't really imagine how annoying and frustrating this race must be with the crowds swarming the roads and all that. We're in no way glorifying this horrific running of the bulls in Spain, which is a horrifying tradition. But at least when people in the crowd fuck around there, they suffer instant and severe, potentially fatal consequences. Yeah. Like that guy who got gored back in 2019 while taking a selfie. Yeah. What did you think was going to happen? See, at the running of the bulls, you take a selfie and uh, real bad things can happen. They need to put, like, weapons on these bikes. <laughs> like, Mad Max, these bikes. It would set. be a much more entertaining race. You get in the way of one of these bikes, you just get turned into fucking mincemeat. Poof. That's what, like, you know, another sport that's, uh, <laughs> unfortunately in some scenarios, self-policing is the rally car races where everyone gathers on the side of those roads where the cars yeah I, I see videos of the that there's like there's no fucking way I all would of ever these do people that. are legitimately insane yeah they're going like oh fucking like eighty miles an hour on like the windiest roads and and hitting wet jumps roads. and their yeah. the cars are soaring by them it has gone catastrophic yeah and I'm surprised it doesn't happen more often but by standing on that sideline you get uh, a momentary sense of that danger that the dr the driver must feel all the time. It gives your life purpose and meaning. I could die right here on these sidelines. I'm going to savor every moment. I think it's silly. Unless I die, I can't savor anymore if I die, but, you know, I could. Any racing event, the Tour de France or race cars or anything like that, like from a being there in person perspective, like the, I got, the ambiance of being at the place and hearing the noises is like, you know, a large portion of it, but you can't see anything. You're on like no, one turn. Can't. You're watching like one, one percent of the race. Yeah, that doesn't sound. Very Meanwhile, fun. they got blimps and drones and all kinds yeah. of shit going on. They got cameras inside the cars. Yeah, watch that shit on TV. That's like I went to the All Star Game last year, the MLB All Star Game, and uh, it was cool being there, but it I was unfulfilled because the production that goes yeah, into the all, event it's on a TV, TV event. Yes, the and the home run derby, they're hitting so many balls so fast that you literally can't see what's happening and you have no idea what the score is because there's a delay on the on the big screens there anyway and yeah. it's like it's it's just That's why you need your AM radio. That's right. Yeah. We love AM radio here AM on AM radio. We're yeah. bringing it back. Anyway, <sighs> if none of that will work like the, the our theories about Mad Maxifying it or adding a bull to the race or yeah. any of that. How about a little good old fashioned shaming? Yeah. We love to shame, don't we, folks? No. I mean, that's definitely not going to work. These people are incapable of shame. But that's what country star Miranda Lambert tried to do recently, only to be met with disapproval from entitled fans that, in all honesty, uh, she was just trying to help. Pay attention to the show, people. So concerts fucking suck these days. Everyone's got their dang phones out <laughs> the entire time. And rarely, if ever, will they look back on the overabundance of footage and photos that they've taken. That's just going to sit 
on their phone. It's just taking up all your iCloud space. And the speakers are so loud, the audio is going to be like... Yeah. Let the memories exist up here. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to take you know a little bit of video or photo, fine. Knock it out once somewhere in the middle of the set. Yeah. And then put the phone away and enjoy yourself. Live in the moment. It's very frustrating when a band comes out on stage and all you can see are the screens of everyone's phones in front of you. Some artists are starting to combat this, though, with immersive concerts where you have to check your phone at the door. And that's fine, but there's also a case to be made, you know, with emergency scenarios. This is America, that's, after that's all. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, the middle ground is shaming audience members for being obsessed with themselves and spending more time proving they were at a show than actually enjoying the show. So that's the gist of what happened at a recent Miranda Lambert concert. And honestly, if it gets to the point where the star of the show is singling you out because of your behavior, it's probably gone far beyond any reasonable point. In fact, based on the interviews that this self-proclaimed influencer has given to news outlets, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that she was the one being extremely annoying and is not telling the whole truth. Here's the story from NBC News. A woman said she is appalled after she and her friends were called out by Miranda Lambert on Saturday at the country singer's Las Vegas show for taking a group photo. Adela Callan said the country singer stopped midway through her performance of Tin Man after spotting her and five of her friends posing for a photo. It was 30 seconds at most, Callan, a social media influencer from Las Vegas, said in a phone interview. We took the picture quickly and we were going to sit back down. Doubt? Doubt. Anyway, the reporting continues. A video clip of the moment went viral on TikTok where many users came to Kaylin and her friend's defense. I'm going to stop right here for a sec, Lambert is heard saying in the video, which has over 1.4 million views and 81,000 likes. These girls are worried about a selfie and not listening to the song, and it's pissing me off a little bit. While the audience roared in support of Lambert during the video, many users on TikTok and Twitter said they felt Lambert's reaction seemed harsh. Yeah, because you're a fucking child. <laughs> yeah. You're 25 years old. Grow yeah. up. <laughs> go to a <laughs> show. Get off the internet and go to a show. So, yeah, I mean, we're going to stop right there because, yeah, like all of you watching this right now, based on these reactions, we, uh, you know, assumed that the selfie taker was maybe like a teenager or a young adult. But no, this woman is 43 years old and willingly posted the photo that caused the ruckus. Yes. Her and her friends look like, yep, the type of people who would get yelled at at a concert for taking too many photos. Pictures obviously can be deceiving. Uh, and we just went through this with the, with the, we were talking about the Tour de France thing. Like, when you take a picture of something with, uh, something in the background, yeah, it it's looks always really way far, far away. away. Do you understand how close to the stage that they have to be in order for the singer to appear like she does in the photo? Really, really close. And also, they used flash during a concert feet away from the performer, which is an egregious mistake. Come on. So first of all, fuck them. Also, in addition to that, people posted follow-up videos that show the crowd being hit with camera flashes from the group's repeated photo taking before being called out. Turn the flash off, grandma. Uh, so the shaming didn't work, and this woman's also clearly a liar, and she is demanding sympathy from the public. Sounds like a real fun person to be around, and speaking of people telling on themselves in public, we had, we got to witness one firsthand this week, didn't we? Yeah, I did not like that moment at all. That was uncomfortable. I don't like public cringe. No, me and Elliot uh, competed in a little uh, bar trivia. I had my I had my water. Elliot had his beer. We were competing in some bar trivia with some friends, and someone nailed this this very obscure answer. Yeah, it was, uh, to, it, down to the exact date. There was a specific round that wasn't for points. It was for a free pitcher of beer, and it was just one question, an intentionally difficult question, where you'd submit an answer, and, and whoever got the closest, the closest yeah. would get the free pitcher of beer. And it was like, what is the exact date that the city of Santa Monica was... Uh, was created as a city. And someone were like, wow, someone got this exactly right. And we were all just like, huh, hold on. That's weird. Unless this person works at Santa Monica City Hall, this is bullshit. And they cheated. And the host was like, unless, you didn't cheat, right? And then they were like, well, I can neither confirm nor deny. Yeah, and then, totally awkward. And then everyone's just like, the whole place went silent. Just and the you air could just sucked feel, out. Yeah, it was like, and then they kept the host doubling was like, down. Wait, what do you mean? Did you cheat or not? I was like, I can neither confirm nor deny. Like, okay, uh, did anyone in your group cheat? Like, I don't know. They might have cheated. It's like, okay, so you cheated. Let's, we're going with the second. And then, then he goes, oh, hey, hey, look, hey, I'm just trying to drink and have a good time here. Yeah. And like the friends were just mortified. Yeah, everyone. 
it, it, we luckily we were upstairs at this place because I cannot handle cringe stuff like that. I would have walked out if I was anywhere near this. I would have been like, I can't fucking. The handle vibes this. were very hostile. Well, we were upstairs, so I was actually enjoying it because I felt at least somewhat removed from it. Yeah. I was like looking down, going, "Man, I would hate to be them right now," and it was so. People people were up to no good, <laughs> all over the place. Yeah, it was, uh... It's like that Sunny Day real estate show that I went to where I had to look at the guy's screen the entire time. There was a guy in front of me, slightly taller, who recorded the entire set. And it was packed. Like, like I, I couldn't get away. Fuck off with that and shit. And I just no. had to watch the show through his phone screen. I hate that so much. A band that I waited nearly 20 years to see. No. Well, I was literally like this. I guess you're going to have to wait look, another 20 years looking around. to actually see them. Yeah. Uh, anyways, with that anecdote out of the way, it's time to take a quick second to let you know that this episode is sponsored by Factor. Now that we're in the thick of summer, you might be looking for some wholesome, convenient meals to support sunny, active days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with flavorful and nutritious ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track reaching your goals. Too busy with summer plans to cook, but want to make sure you're eating well? With Factor, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and skip the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality that you need. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. Then get back outside and soak up that warm weather. But not too long and put on some sunscreen. That's right. Ready to feel your best while making the most out of your summer adventures? Stick to your wellness goals with premium ready-to-eat meals featuring high-quality ingredients such as broccolini, leeks, and asparagus. Mm -hmm. Treat yourself to 34-plus weekly restaurant-quality options like bruschetta shrimp risotto, green goddess chicken, and grilled steakhouse filet mignon. Mmm, ready in just two minutes. Mmm. Too busy running around during the day to think about lunch? Keep your energy up with lunch to go. Effortless, wholesome meals like grain bowls and salad toppers that are ready to eat when you're on the go. No microwave required. Looking for calorie conscious options this summer? Try delicious, dietitian approved, calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving. Need an extra boost to support your wellness goals this summer? Try Protein Plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. I just had it out of their taco bowl last night. Delicious. Mmm, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> With Factor, you can rest assured you're making a sustainable choice. They offset 100% of their delivery emissions, source 100% renewable electricity for their production sites and offices, and feature sustainably sourced seafood in their meals. This July, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered right to your door. Ready in just two minutes, no prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash newsdump50 and use our code newsdump50 to get 50% off. That is code newsdump50 at factormeals.com slash newsdump50 to get 50% off. Thanks for sponsoring the show. Links are also down in the description. Now let's get back into the news. So you didn't think we were done talking about country music, did you? Get back in here. Get back over here. <laughs> Partner. Uh, yeah. So here's us being elitist assholes. But yeah, all the country music you hear these days kind of fucking blows. It's literally just pop music with like a fiddle or some slide guitar added on top of it. It's, uh, yeah, it's... A lot of it is straight up, the uh, recently, just straight up EDM with country singers. Yeah, that's, and that, and you can thank that uh, sadly deceased... Avicii? Avicii for that. Uh, he, he left us with a lasting mark on the music industry. He made Nashville mainstream country even more annoying than it already was. And the lyrics, whew. The lyrics to mainstream country songs are by and large actually pretty antithetical to country music's roots. Regardless, one song in particular went a little too far recently with its blind obsession with America's good old days, wink wink, leaving the <laughs> singer slash songwriter bewildered at the idea that his um, racist dog whistle perhaps song is in fact racist, especially yeah. considering that the music video for the track featured footage from Black Lives Matter protests. A little on the nose, Mr. Jason Aldean. But yeah, the lyrics for his track, Try That in a Small Town, which basically just lists off a bunch of, like, again, dog whistly racist <laughs> talking points indicating that his utopian vision is um, essentially what used to be known as a sundown town where um, after the sun goes down, you better not be here and be black at the same time. Yes, that's... Uh... That was a thing. It sounds like and an it, anthem for that type of... Uh, and probably still is a thing in some of the oh, no, remote they, parts of the sure, country. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in addition to the lyrics and the clips used, the video also features a live performance from Jason Aldean in front of a Tennessee County courthouse where an infamous lynching took place less than 100 years ago. 
Uh, if Aldine wasn't in on what the song and video were trying to portray here, uh, then someone else is up to something deviant because the imagery is pretty undeniable. I thought it was just the Back to the Future courthouse because no one's using the Universal lot right now. Hey, we got a place you can film <laughs> for real cheap. <laughs> the Hilldale, uh, what was it, a bank? In, I guess that was number two, it was a bank. But it's the courthouse in the first yeah, one. Yeah. You have to save the clock time. And it's still just like at yeah, Universal Studios. Yeah, if you go during Halloween Horror Nights, you can see yeah. it. Yeah. Also, Aldine absolutely should have been aware of what he was singing and showing. It's like, what are you doing? It's pretty fucking brazen, to be honest. Anyways, the outrage was so severe that even country music television, CMT, has banned the video from their airwaves. CMT gone woke. Yeah, it's Clinton music television now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, and of course, that has led to inev the inevitable calls for protest against the network by the same people who still refuse to drink Bud Light because they think it's going to make them gay or something. These people are all going to be living like monks in caves in no time. And that'll probably be good for them. They, yeah, the only movie they'll watch is that Freedom movie, Sound of Freedom. Sound of Freedom. Uh, every day, one billion children are trafficked. Oh, uh, a, a reporter actually went to test that out recently and went to like a sold out screening and just walked in and it was completely empty. Yeah, they bought their own tickets. It's the same thing they do with books, except not only are they juicing the numbers, but all their idiot uh, constituents are going there and thinking it's some sort of conspiracy to yes. make it harder for them to see. Well, the that's movie. a double win on their part. Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. Uh, here's the Washington Post with more on all of this. Country music star Jason Aldean is facing immense backlash over his new music video, Try That in a Small Town which combines news footage of Black Lives Matter protests, violence, and crime with lyrics such as, try that in a small town, see how far you make it down the road. Around here, we take care of our own. <laughs> and got me a gun that my granddad gave me. They say one day they're gonna round up. Well, that shit might fly in the city, good luck. I uh, mean, even if he didn't personally intend it to be uh, taken that way, these are, this is word for word what like, Klansmen used to say uh, about black people existing in their community. Yes. Um, there's just and there's just especially with the accent. There's just no way to not associate this with virulent Jim Crow era and Reconstruction era racism. Uh -huh. Sorry. Uh, the reporting continues, adding, "Try that in a small town" has also leapt to the top of many streaming charts, and top Republicans are defending Aldine, who insists the song has nothing to do with race. Some who accuse the video of racism point to its setting in downtown Columbia, the site of historical acts of violence against black people. Al Dean's performance backdrop is the Maury County Courthouse, which at times appears to be on fire as images of burning American flags are projected onto it. It's the same building where a mob hanged 18-year-old Henry Choate from the balcony in 1927. The teen had been accused of attacking a white girl who never identified him as her assailant and whose mother begged the mob to let him stand trial. Columbia is also the site of an infamous 1946 race riot that nearly resulted in the lynching of future Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall. Huh. A lot of history there. Listen, that may be true, but good luck finding any location in the Deep South with any visual appeal that wasn't the site of horrific crimes against humanity. Yeah. It's yeah. just hard. Try having a wedding down here that isn't just on a literal fucking slave graveyard. That's right. Impossible. You can't do it. You know, Sherman should have burned this whole fucking place down. Because now it's really awkward, because it's all still here, and ugh. We don't really know how to, well, I don't want to say honor it, but that's kind of what a lot of places do. Sherman didn't go far enough. <laughs> should have burned the whole fucking thing down. They also ruined a beautiful stone mountain by carving in a bunch of Confederate generals oh, on the side God. of it. God, yeah, I fucking hate that thing. But uh, let's do some some updates now, and here's an update that ties into a story, for, a story from earlier in the episode, and a previous story we covered, regarding people who have either zero self-awareness or are actually just stupid, careless assholes. On a recent episode of Weekly Weird News, we spoke about a tourist who decided to carve their name into the 2,000-year-old Roman Colosseum and then claimed that they didn't know they were doing something wrong because they didn't think it was that old. What, is it like 100 years old? 200? Even if it was, it's you're still doing something wrong. Yeah, well... In America, that is it, something ancient. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we regret to inform you that another tourist has carved their name into history. This time in Japan. Here's Smithsonian Magazine with more. A Canadian... Oh, thank goodness. Oh, thank right. goodness it was not oh, an American. Thank God. A Canadian teenager all hopped up on 
Maple syrup. Maple syrup and... Uh, Forest fires. What's that place they all like to eat, drink coffee at? Uh, Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons. A Canadian teenager has admitted to carving his name into an 8th century Buddhist temple in Nara, Japan. Okay, according so not to as old. <laughs> Slightly less old. <laughs> <laughs> While visiting the Toshodaji Temple, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, <laughs> earlier this month, he used his fingernail to carve the letter J and the name Julian onto a wooden pillar. This is especially funny because it's like, I don't know, I mean, there's probably a lot of like other uh, white people, Westerners, in his like tour group or whatever, but uh, it does narrow down like finding the culprit quite Julian. a bit. Julian! Okay. Huh. Huh. Interesting. Uh, the article continues. BBC News' Nadine Youssef reports that after the incident, Japanese officials questioned the teenager on suspicion of violating the cultural properties protection law. Under the law, anyone who causes damage to an object of important cultural property may face up to five years in prison, along with thousands of dollars in fines. The tourist was in the temple's Golden Hall, which Toshodaji's website calls the greatest structure of its era still standing today. Its beauty is such that it has been written about in many famous old poems. Oh, God. Compared to smaller cultural missteps, desecrating an important temple or shrine is a whole other level of disrespect, says Catherine Heald, chief executive of the luxury tour operator Remote Lands, to the Washington Post's Natalie B. Compton and Julia Mio Inuma. It's like writing nasty graffiti on a church. The boy, who is currently with his parents, says that he hadn't intended to harm Japanese culture. A police official tells CNN's Carla Cripps and Eru Ishikawa. Like, imagine being this kid's parents. Yeah. Like, this is probably... Uh, teenager, though, that's, unless, a, that's a pretty wide range. Unless they learned it from dad. Yeah. Like, uh, I've definitely seen a bunch of videos on, like, Reddit and Twitter of, like, moms and dads desecrating, like, national parks and shit. Like, yeah, with, they like have, with their fucking five yeah. kids and like getting confronted about it and getting what? like and getting even more like hostile and embarrassed because like you're disrespecting me in front of my kids. This is why animals are are the world's hall monitors because between filming the episode that started this week and this one, a woman it was reported that a woman was fucking gored by a bison yeah. in Yellowstone. I got, they I, they make sure to mention this is the first one of the year, which means there are more coming. I got a, a country song I'm about to debut. It's called Try That in a U.S. National Park. <laughs> yeah, you get your ass beat by a ranger or an animal. That's a good country song. I think you should write it. Try That in a National Park. Yeah, it's... Uh, uh, man. I mean, this is Did you why... see the video from a couple weeks... <laughs> Did you see the one from a couple weeks back where this woman was walking up to a geyser in Yellowstone? and like, Or not up to a geyser, but to a hot springs. And, you know, like hot springs water is deadly hot. And there's, like, they jump the barrier. She's walking up to I'm it. I'm already shivering just, at the just thought. Just a whole crowd of people like, don't do it. <laughs> no, you're going to hurt yourself. And she walks up to it and, like, dips her finger in it. And then she's, like, running around like, ow, 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 ow. And they're like, we told you, don't touch it. It's, like, 250 degrees. Uh, sad story, but uh, a guy did just die in Death Valley. Well, it's in the name. Yeah. But, yeah. It was 117 out when they found him. Yeah, it's a lot of people die in Death Valley. Yeah. Uh, there's a very famous story of a family of Germans. Apparently Germans really like Death Valley. But there's one family of Germans uh, doing a little Death Valley trip and being just completely unprepared for how deadly inhospitable it is out there. And just like... What? <laughs> get their fucking two-wheel drive car stuck out in the middle of nowhere. And just, like, yeah, there's this whole mystery. Where they had to... Investigators had to sort of reassemble, like, what happened and what it's, led to this. There's a... Uh, a lot of the places in Death Valley that I saw were named after Polish people, but it was because they the pol the Polish people uh, had ran like the borax mines, mm. and they're like, huh, nobody buying borax anymore. We should make this into a tourist destination. Yeah. And just started naming all of the vistas after themselves. Yeah, good for them. Yeah, well, you know, when life gives you lemons, you you sell lemonade and then you charge people to look at the lemonade. That's right. Yeah. Uh, moving on, though, here's an update to a story from Florida that we shared last week about farmers and dump -a -dum -bum 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 -bum, <laughs> leaving the state because they were too woke, according to local politicians. Bye, 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 bye. It's actually because they literally can't afford to operate there because the state is repeatedly and consistently pummeled by hurricanes that are getting larger and more destructive year after year. Well, you know, it only takes one. Now all the cards are starting to fall because another major <laughs> is there is there no company that won't go woke here's cbs 
AAA will not renew the auto and home insurance policies for some customers in Florida, joining a growing list of insurers dialing back their presence in the Sunshine State amid a growing risk of natural disasters. Unfortunately, Florida's insurance market has become challenging in recent years, the company said in a statement emailed to CBS Money Watch. Last year's catastrophic hurricane season contributed to an unprecedented rise in reinsurance rates, making it more costly for insurance companies to operate. The company is the fourth insurer over the last year who says that they are backing away from insuring Floridians, a sign that extreme weather linked to climate change is destabilizing the insurance market. Yeah. Hmm, you think? Huh, yeah, and the, the backup plan is, well, uh, kind of socialism. I it's, got a new country Flo song. Try insuring your house in a Florida town. <laughs> Florida's <laughs> backup plan is a state-sponsored insurance plan Socialism. that is uh, obviously Socialism. expensive because you're insuring houses that are going to get destroyed. Socialism. The problem is that that insurance plan doesn't have the necessary budget to pay for all of this. So yeah, it's going to fall on everyone Who's else gonna in the pay country. for it? The rest of us. Yeah. Well, not us, thankfully. No, all of us. All of our tax dollars are going to be bailing out. Is it out. a federal program? It's a Floridian program, but it doesn't have the money to pay for all of that. Oh, well... We should build a wall. <laughs> Anyways, just to see how seriously presidential candidate and governor of Florida Ron DeSantis has been handling this recent news. A few days back, DeSantis was asked about insurance companies pulling out of the state, and he responded that he thinks, quote, more insurance companies will return to Florida after the hurricane season. Got a lot of good that'll do. And he's also urging patience, saying he's knocking on wood that we won't have a big storm this summer. Oh, good. Me so hungry. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> hungry. <laughs> Uh, you're I, getting a, I love his plan of just, hey, knock on wood. Hey, maybe hurricanes in Florida will stop. No, the Gulf, maybe, uh, the Gulf of Mexico is currently like 92 degrees. The water is 92 degrees. That is hurricane making weather. Yeah, well, I guess we'll see. You know, the weatherman, he lies all the time, so. We'll see how things look in September, Florida, which is like the peak, late mm -hmm. August, early September. They're gonna name the next. They're oh god. They're gonna name the next hurricane Hurricane Dylan Mulvaney, aren't they? Hurricane woke. Hurricane woke. And finally today, uh, oh look, another thing to watch. I I really I honestly didn't expect both videos to be posted within days of each other, but I was obviously very busy at Funhouse recently, and there's another video up. On <laughs> another <laughs> Things keep hitting. <laughs> Mr. President, another Funhouse videos. Uh, it's up on their channel. It features me on it. Uh, this time I'm playing video games with James and Elise. Uh, it's, uh, I, I was able to successfully link one of their videos on our end screen, so it'll be up there again, or if you get confused, it'll be down in the link in the description below. Uh, go check out that video, but also make sure you like this one before you head over there. So that's the plan. You, you hit the like button now, you scroll back up. You're, I know you're reading comments like all of us. And you scroll back up, you hit the like button, then you go watch their video, uh, or you watch our other one from yesterday where we have a big update on the Hollywood strikes, uh, and that includes a story about some software that is already demonstrating the exact fucking thing that everyone's protesting. Yeah. Couldn't have made Funny a better enough. example. Excellent timing. Thank you. Check those out, and we will see you soon for some weird news. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.